Hello, hello everyone. We are back with one last bad ending for Samuel and Bandcamp Boyfriend. And we're at the last chapter, the final chapter, final choices, and I can finally go and look in the basement. <laughs> so the key is don't go to the office first. Really take your time looking around other places and then you'll eventually run out of time and then bad things happen. So uh, let's go say it our curiosity that we didn't the first time around. Oh, Garth, are you down here? I try the door. Locked. It's gotta be in here. Let's see if we can find a key. We take a lap around the cottage, checking desks and drawers for keys. I keep an eye out for the jammer too, but we find nothing. Dang it, Wiley must have the key. Yeah, knew it. Wait. Now that I think about it, Mr. Wiley keeps his keys on him. Doesn't he? Y you might be right. Mm. We're not getting into this basement. Let's look somewhere else. Garth, I'm sorry. So close and yet so far. Okay. I'm I'm saddened. All right, bedroom, I guess. Back in here. Samuel sorts through the closet while I check under the bed as well as between the mattress and bed frame. Good thinking. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but there's nothing here. Did he hide it in any of his clothes? No. Man, he sure has a lot of polos. We scour the room, but no luck. Let's keep looking. Okay. Then we hear it. The distant scream of trumpets. Alright, let's... Alright. So he had to leave. We didn't have our phone. I race all around the cottage, searching every corner. I rattle off a list of possible hiding places in my head as I go, checking off every one. I think I can hear the mellophone starting now. How much time do I have before the saxophones? I try to remember the order of performances, but my mind is blank still going over the list of hiding places. Okay, and then skip. What in the... Why is there static not on the phone? What is with the static? Then it hits me, quite literally. The instrument cases. Suddenly there's a loud crackling from behind me and I clap a hand over my mouth to stifle a scream. I turn, expecting to see Mr. Wiley, but no one is there. The crackling drops to a steady stream of static and that's when I pinpoint the source of the sound. Nurse Tempo, everyone's favorite metronome. What? That's strange! You don't say. Interesting. So you can still save yourself at this moment. <laughs> Ooh. Nurse Metronome? What the? I know I'm going for the bad end, but I kind of like just don't want to even like touch it. <laughs> I'm gonna touch it. I approach the metronome, wondering why it randomly turned on. The static is more than unnerving, so I reach to turn it off. But right before I can, it utters another burst of static and a robotic female voice begins counting. One, two, three, four. Wh what the hell? Why is this thing on the voice setting? Mr. Wiley never uses that setting. We've only ever turned it on to laugh at it before. My hand starts to shake. Then Nurse Tempo begins counting faster and faster as if possessed. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. We have had this on one of the other routes where we turned it on for this. I can't stand to listen anymore. I pick up the metronome and scramble to find the off button. The voice halts and the static slowly fades away, leaving behind silence, save for the pounding of my heart in my ears. I throw down Nurse Tempo so fast and back away from it, eager to put some distance between myself and that thing. I can't afford to get distracted. I have a job to do. Uh-huh. I'm gonna be chewing on that for a while. In a mad scramble, I begin undoing every single clasp and ripping open the cases. The saxophone case contains nothing but a saxophone. The tuba case is empty, its owner resting on a nearby table. I snatch up... A euphonium, baritone. Okay, so we're, we're back for a little bit, and then... Let's see. 
Okay, so she managed to call the police. The percussionists watch me with wide eyes. I stare back. I strain my ears to see if I can hear the saxes, but I hear nothing. Didn't they start yet? Or did they go already? I have no way of telling. Okay. That wasn't a firework, was it? There's the first firework! What now? The sound of an explosion cuts me off, and I swear I can feel the ground quake under me. Hurry! That's the signal! An explosion was the signal? I can barely hear Aaron over the roar of the fireworks, which sounds like one long explosion, rather than the usual cheerful popping and booming. Through the trees, I can see a bright white light coming from the lake. It's so bright that I have to shield my eyes. I is that what was supposed to happen? Keep moving, Doug! Marion's right. We only have a few more minutes. As we sprint through the trees, I try to tell myself that the police are on their way and we are going home tonight. But for some reason, I feel a stone-cold dread creeping over me, telling me that something has gone horribly wrong. Samuel's face comes to mind and my heart aches unbearably. Please, please let him be okay. In under a minute, the world goes from bright and loud to dark and quiet. How is it already over? Hello? The four of us reach the edge of the woods and the stretch of grass that leads to the lake. There we pause, staring at the sight before us. My breath catches in my throat. There is nothing but dark, thick smoke. I can't even see the pavilion or hear the cheerful chatter of my fellow bandits as the battle of the sections wraps up. The world is silent as death. Hurry! I start to run, leading the others down the hill. Panting raggedly, we all wear matching expressions of shock. Then I hear it. What I had mistaken for a firework earlier. Yeah. <gasps> oh no! Did Wiley just, like, kill all of us in this one? Doug goes down next to me, hitting the ground hard. Doug! Marion's scream rips apart the night. Oh god. Shaking all over, I drop to my knees and reach for Doug instinctively as if I can still save him. But there's no one left to save! Oh no! Why does Doug keep dying? I hear heavy footsteps on the grass behind me. No, no, no. Was that the warden? An unfamiliar voice makes my heart skip a beat. No, no, no. Aaron, Marion, can you describe what you see? <laughs> I start to turn. Cadence! Dang! They really gonna leave me on that cliffhanger, eh? Whose perspective is this? Who? What? The camp is alive with dancing red and blue lights cast from the cop cars. As I step outside, they assault my vision and I must shield my eyes. Keep moving. Police officers swarm the camp. Their faces fill with shock when they see me shakily making my way across the grass. Clear the way! I need medical attention over here! What's your name, son? Garth! Garth escaped! Garth. The word croaks forth from my stiff vocal cords and hardly sounds like a name. My own voice has become unrecognizable to my ears. The police officer hands me off to another. Take him to the front of the camp. Keep him far away from the lake. What happened at the lake? A smoky smell permeates the night air. It makes me sick to my stomach. As we head away from the throng of police officers, I can hear the man in charge barking out orders and I slow my steps to listen. Report to HQ that we found a sole survivor. The death toll is yet to be determined, but we can confirm four gunshot victims at this point in time. What do they mean... sole survivor? Someone asks a question. The perpetrator hasn't been located. 
I'm ordering a second perimeter sweep. None of this makes sense. Surely I must be losing my grip on reality. This is merely some twisted nightmare brought forth from my slipping towards insanity. Because I would much rather that be the case. I would much rather be locked away for eternity than have to face the fact that my friends and colleagues are dead. That the Blue Mountain Bandit's marching band has simply ceased to be. The realization causes my world to shift. My knees buckle from under me and the police officers by my side are too slow to catch me. The feeling of cool dew-laden grass on my cheek is the last thing I feel as my vision tunnels and the world fades to black. Poor Garth. Holy crap. That was so... That was so unsettling. And it's my favorite bad ending <laughs> so far. Hold, now that is a bad ending. Oh, I felt like sick when I heard like that muttering behind me. That was really well done by the voice actor, by the way. Just putting that out there. Super well done. But that whole thing was just super duper unsettling. What does any... Because now I'm like... Okay. You know, on the face of it, Nurse Tempo influence Wiley is like my, my first guess, right? Like, whoever Miss Tempo is. Sorry, not Miss Tempo. Nurse Tempo. Whoever Nurse Tempo is. And whoever that is, is crying? And communicating through that device that seems to be restricted in some way. And then she delayed cadence enough that everything exploded. And we got shot. And normally you think it was Wily. But that voice didn't sound like Wily. It kind of sounded a bit like the warden, but I don't know if that's true. I have so many questions. I'm trying to like figure things out. I got, ooh, I gotta think about this for a while. <laughs> let me let me know what you guys think. What's your what's your running theories after that particular ending? Because that was that was quite an ending. Well, on that note, uh, time to take a break. <laughs> Back over to. Gilded Shadows, and uh, we're back in Endgame over there. Time to do uh, Caleb's route, so hopefully I'll see you there for that, guys. Otherwise, I'll see you when I come back to this delightful horror show. <laughs> Thanks again for watching. Until next time, I will see you later.